Hello, Scott here, the Stowell America Motorman Robotics Division. Today we're going to look at a very convenient function in the DX100 programming pendant called IO Variable Customize. The customize screen allows the user to set up up to 32 variables or signals that they can monitor with a one button access. So we're going to start off by going to teach mode. Now that our programming pendant is in teach mode, in order to enable the function we must go to management security level. System info, security, on the default screen it's on operation, press the select key, cursor to management and press select again. Now we need to put in our password. The default password for the management security level is eight number nines. You can press and hold the nine key till it fills the field with asterisks, or you can press the nine key eight times. Now we're going to press the enter key. So we see our security level has changed to management, and we now have three keys displayed up in our status line. Now we need to go to our setup menu. So we're going to go to the right side of the main menu by pressing the small black arrow at the bottom of the main menu. Now we're going to find our setup key. Press setup. Now we can see all the options under setup and the option we're looking for is function enable. Inside our function enable we can cursor down to the IO variable customize function. By default, it is set to invalid. We're going to press our select key and we're going to make that function valid. Now that our function is valid, we're going to go back to the left side of the main menu and we're going to go to our application icon. In this case, we have a welding application set up. So under my welding application icon, I'm going to find a new menu, IO variable customize. I'm going to open up this IO variable customize screen, and I can see that I have up to 32 fields. We're only displaying 14, but there are 32 fields available to us. I'm going to move my cursor over to the first field, and I'm going to press select. And I can see that I can set it up to not monitor. I can set up an input or an output signal for monitoring or for actually executing in teach mode. I also have the option for a B variable, an I variable, or a D variable. These variables may be used to set data and I can monitor this screen live real time while the robot is executing to watch what my data input is into these fields. So we're going to choose a variable for this particular setup and we're going to choose a B variable. And we'll say that our parts are being counted in B0. So I'm going to type in the three zeros into my field and I'm going to press enter. So now that shows me that I've got B0 set and it's giving me a content. So my B variable currently is at zero. Now I've got an option to go over and name this field. So we're going to press select on the name and then I'm going to name it part count. After I've named my field, I'm going to press the enter key now I can also press the enter on the touch screen or on the programming pendant, it doesn't matter. So now I've got my name named. So if I go into my variable icon and go to my byte variables, I can see that that name has ported over right into my name file. So now my variable is named for part count. And let's say I'm going to change this or I have executed 25 parts in my system. So I've changed the data to 25. Now if I go back to my 
icon for my execution tool, I can select I.O. Variable Customize, and I can see that my contents is now at zero. So at the end of the shift, the operator can look at the screen, document how many parts was run, and then they can cursor over to it, press select, type in zero, press enter, and they can reset the count for the next shift. Now I can also choose to do a output signal or an input signal. When I select on the in and out, it's asking for an address. It's not asking me for what output number I want to use or what input number I want to monitor. It's asking for the relay address. And I'm going to say we're going to use uh, output relay 10010. And then I'm going to press enter. 10010 is output number one. So now I have output number one displayed on my screen. And maybe this output is used to toggle uh, a beacon light or to toggle some kind of a screen out on my interface panel. It's just a toggle. Because it's a universal output, I have the ability to turn this on and off from the programming pendant. If I cursor over and highlight the field with the bullet, press my interlock key and hold it, and then press select, my bullet highlights. I've just turned that output signal on. To turn it off, interlock and select turns that signal off. I can also cursor over and name this signal. This is, function is a very convenient way to track or monitor stuff in our system without navigating through a lot of different files to get there. Again, under my device icon, I will find IO variable customize, and it's very convenient. I can leave this screen pulled up on the pendant, and my operators never have to navigate to anything. Just a matter of switching modes. This has been IO variable customize. Thank you.